Hey there. It's you once again. Welcome back to uh, I'm continuing the doing series for Universal Soldier, which I did review the first two movies. I reviewed the original movie because I love the movie to death. I reviewed uh, the sequel 99 Universal Soldier The Return. So now I'm gonna review Universal Soldier 2 Brothers in Arms came out 1998 which was actually Showtime it was actually on Showtime uh, made for the t on TV channel which was uh, which was actually the pilot uh, movie for the series they were for actually mini series they wanted to do the mini series of Universal Soldier and this is actually a Canadian TV series and no wonder this movie got 3.0 on IMDb. This movie was poor. It was bad, awful acting. It was just terrible. Oh my god. Well, I saw I saw worse movies. You know, it's really sad that only two people did review uh, those two bad TV TV movies. And I'm I don't know. Fuck it. I'm gonna do it anyway because uh, I wanna. I said I'm gonna review. All six Universal Soldier movies. I reviewed the first two movies. This was made. Uh, this was actually made for uh, for TV movie. More for made for video. I think was only released on VHS. If I, it was was released on TV. But uh, yeah, Universal Soldier two. Uh, I mean Universal Soldier: The Return with John Claude Van Damme completely ignored this film and the sequel. Universal Soldier 3 Unfinished Business. This movie was just terrible. Brothers in Arms was terrible. That was just awful. It was lame. The acting performance was terrible. And of course, directed was by um was by Jeff Wulnoch. Never heard about it. Written by Peter M. Lenko, who was produced by this movie, Demolition Man. But this movie, oh my god, you know. So was released on 27 September on, show, on Showtime 1998. Stars made Bataglia, Andrew Jackson, Michael Kopeman, um, Gary Busey, Richard McMillian, um, Aaron Tager, Barbara Gordon, Chandra West, um, Eric Bryson, Kevin Rushman, Desmond Campbell, Jeff and Jeff Wincott, who also stars in this movie. And Burt Reynolds is in this movie as in the shadows. But this was a rubbish movie. It was just a pure, lame, trash movie. But okay, the movie uh, starts off when the first movie was ended. Just this time in Luke Devereaux's role, stats uh, in uh, John claude Van Damme, stabs Matt Battaglia, which is a terrible actor. Never heard about him. And uh, of course, Chandra West uh, steps in the shoes of Veronica um, Roberts. Who was previously played by Ali Walker. And I just realized, I just right away noticed that Chandra West is a Canadian. This is a Canadian movie. I noticed right away her accent. So yeah, that's the the, the that's the reason this movie was was made for TV because it was uh, filmed in Canada all the time, you know, just like a fucking Canadian movie. You know, nothing against Canada, but this is just God awful. This will be a sequel to Universal Soldier. Makes the first Universal Soldier a masterpiece. Yeah, it makes a masterpiece that movie. Because this is so just bad, wooden, awful. But starts the movie uh, uh, when the first movie from Jean Claude Van Damme and, um, um, and um, Dolph Lundgren, the movie ended. We see now in the open scene eh, um, the fight. But this time we see Bad Bataglia. Fighting a, a, a known actor, Andrew Jackson, and uh, just like when them did, he goes uh, puts uh, Dolph Lundgren the meat locker in the meat grinder and kills him. You know that's what he does. And now Veronica, which is supposed to be, which she's supposed to be lying, and uh, man, the tiger is supposed to go there and grab her for the hand like when them did. He doesn't. She runs to him. They hug each other. So now they, the, so now they're uh, like both saved, and um, uh, so uh, Eric, uh, um, I mean, um, so um, uh, <clears throat> Veronica has still been, is actually been framed, and she's, she's a fugitive now. She's accused uh, uh, to kill her, her, uh, her colleague, colleague, and she, they're still looking. The FBI are still looking for her, which I don't know get, get it why. 
um, she's like been hunted down and uh, and of course uh, now Luke and uh, Veronica are actually living now in the in, I think uh, still in Louisiana. They both they both live now in um, on the farm with their parents, which are now played by different actors than the first movie. And um, and somehow the the CAA government, you know, um, played by the uh, played by. Um, Michael Copeman, Gary Busey, and Burt Reynolds, which he, which he appears on the end, in the shadows, you know, the conspiracy, uh, actually, they decide to do, um, they actually activated the Unisol programs, and uh, the reason, and they somehow, I don't know how, but they activated Luke and turned him back into a fucking zombie, and now Luke goes like a fucking cyborg, he was through go goddamn movie like a goddamn cyborg, he goes on a train, and his train goes to the Canada, uh, no, to Canada, to Chicago, his fucking train goes to to Chicago, well, well uh, Veronica finds out, you know, she uh, goes with uh, his parents' car, and she uh, finds the, the, the car, her car uh, abandoned, and the leads brings her to the train station, which she finds out that the, the train is actually uh, uh, going to uh, Chicago, so Veronica, through the goddamn music soundtracks, you know, she travels to Chicago, and when she tries to get Luke, she sees this couple of people, those people, you know, and they're actually uh, like soldiers, and um, they're taking Luke, and they actually put him um, in the machine, they actually go and turn him into Unisol, and she goes to the ship, and I still know why was there's a female soldier uh, guarding the ship, I don't get it. I mean, they try, maybe uh, uh, because the actress was probably so small, they couldn't find any outfit or any uniform, so they put a, a female in the film. So she goes, knock the female down, grabs her fucking clothes, and then we find out that uh, Luke has a brother, Eric, when it was never, ever mentioned in the first movie. He was an only child in the first movie. It was never mentioned, it makes no logic. Oh, and, hers, uh, and his brother was in Vietnam. Why the fuck was that not mentioned in the first movie? And the brother of Luke is now played by Jeff Wincott, which I just reviewed his great, awesome movie, Mission of Justice. It's my favorite movie he ever did, Mission of Justice. But he goes with a blonde hair. What's with the fucking blonde hair, Jeff? You know? And he's not a bad, but yeah, it is, because it, he wears a blonde hair. And she goes... She's, he's now, uh, he's now, uh, uh, I think, uh, um, uh, he's now Sergeant Eric uh, Devereaux and he's a GR5. She goes and activates him. They try to escape. But uh, uh, <clears throat> in the process with the, with the scientists and Unisos, they actually, uh, both of them get caught in this, uh, in this truck and, um, and that's it. They get, uh, they get captured. But somehow, I still know how somehow memories came back to um, Luke. So when he hears that that um, that the Gary Busey, um, he says, um, "What?" Uh, um, Otto Mazur says, "Kill them!" You know, he uh, his memory activates and he tries to save them. Uh, the girl and Luke jumps off the train. Pierre gets captured. So the two Unisols go after them, fire them, you know, they actually hit, uh, they hit, uh, uh, Luke, he's supposed to fall down, but he's still like walking like a goddamn, running like a goddamn zombie, fires at the, them, you know, and the train goes, uh, continues, so they both go travel to a goddamn movie, they both travel with this, uh, this mini family van, you know, and they, they pick a stranger, Pays him, you know, so that he was gonna be a, a, dri a runaway driver, and uh, uh, of course on the cornfield, you know, first off, the, the, once again he's naked and acts like a rip of the first movie, and Chandra Mays goes and cuts the, the, the thing that tracking that device once again, just like in the first movie, completely rips of the first movie, and uh, he gets uh, from Gary Busey uh, a order that the, where they're gonna meet. 
and um, they they now uh, both of them with, with this uh, runaway driver go to the to uh, to the meat place and they go and and steal the um, they go and steal Eric and they make an explosion with a, with completely classic or she is just like in face of John was face off, you know, or, or, uh, over the rainbow, the same garbage with our classic music orchestra, what the fuck is it, classic musical orchestra, god damn it, you know, so they escape, and, um, so now, now the guy doesn't want to get paid 100 bucks, he escapes, you know, so those, those two brothers go to the bar, and, uh, somehow they drag them to the bar, um, Gary Busey also takes over, kills, uh, uh, he goes and kills this guy, um, Lieutenant called Jack Cameron, uh, uh, Cameron, he goes and kills him, takes over the project, and the reason is called Brothers and Us because, um, he wants to, uh, smuggle for the, uh, the di diamonds, he is, uh, stolen, uh, Universal Soldiers on the, uh, on the black market for the arms dealers, so that he can get rich, you know, so that, that's all about, there's no project, or there, there's no project, there's no sci-fi in this movie, there barely is any action at all, it's actually about, uh, about uh, Gary Busey selling uh, um, those uh, Universal Soldiers on the market so he can get rich by, by, uh, by, by getting the, the diamonds, you know, which are worth millions. And that's, that's completely stupid, there's no sci science fiction in this movie, you know. So on the end, in this bar, you know, they, they go and, pool, uh, and play the pool on it, and uh, 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 Gary Busey shows up, and he captures Chandra Vez, you know, Veronica, and I don't know why was even Veronica like uh, some, uh, like some martial artist fighting Gary Busey, Gary Busey barely even punches her back, he gets hit, you know, and um, and of course uh, Eric shoots one of the Union souls, but gets killed. So um, Luke instead shooting the the guy. You know, the 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 first Union soul he goes and fights him. Just like in the first movie, completely rips off, kills him somehow. And uh, Chandra is knocks Gary Busey, and we saw his face dead, but he came to life like a zombie. And uh, Luke goes and shoots him. You know, and then they go to the brother, finds out that he's dead. They go to the funeral, and that's it. And the movie just completely ends with, uh, without any explanation. There's no science fiction in this movie. If they try to do uh, the X Files, which was that time very popular, they failed. If they try to do a miniseries, they failed. I would rather watch this film. This is actually two version miniseries, the um, thirteen, the conspiracy. Watch these two movies. This is how they do. You know, this is how you do. You know, the the thirteen, the conspiracy, much better than than all four board movies, a lot of five board movies. That's how you do a movie. They're supposed to be, if they try to do uh, a conspiracy or something, they should learn from this movie, even though this movie was re released after this, this god-awful Canadian flick. But this was just trash. I mean, the acting, the story was terrible. The acting, but for Matt Battaglia, was god-awful. He was the worst of the film. He was like a goddamn walking zombie through whole goddamn movie. Did not even step in the shoes of Van Damme. He was god-awful. I barely heard about him. Chandra West, she's a Canadian. Her accent is Canadian. Veronica Roberts supposed to be American, not Canadian. You know, that's kind of fucked her up. They, they hired a Canadian actress. And not American actress, you know. So that's another wooden problem. And another god bad awful acting performance. This movie was just god bad awful, you know. It was just terrible. It was uh, even the five scenes were like laughable. I was like laughing my ass. Like Gary Busey gets hit, you know. I love Gary Busey in this movie, you know. Little weapon, this movie. I love him Predator 2, I love him in I the Tiger, I love him in Point Break, I love him in uh, Under Siege, you know, even I love that that underrated Red to Video movie from 1987, Bulletproof, which he played McBean, you know, even in that movie he was much better, but they completely, I mean, the, he's not the worst part of the film, the worst part, the, the bad actor, the worst part is Bad Bataglia, this guy is... Uncompetent actor, 
You know, he was terrible. There was no excitement. The actions against us are laughable. They're corny. They're terrible. They, they, they're just, they're just god awful. You know, there's barely anything happened in this movie. This is just uh, really trash. No wonder it was released on VHS. And it got, only got, what, three on IMDb? You know, no wonder. And this was like made a sequel to the, the Universal Soldier with Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren, which is one of my favorite action movies of all time. You know, yes, it's my personal favorite movie. This just wasn't, this is like in a bad time, you know. Just wasn't that, that awesome, that spectacular. And I know it was like low budget, but that's nothing to do. They still could try to do much better. The movie could have been much better executed, but it wasn't. You know, so. Oh my god, so this movie was just terrible, you know. Terrible, terrible, you know, forgettable. I mean, Matt Bettegle was a terrible actor. It was wooden, it was just awful. I mean, I don't know what what they tried to do, you know. If they were hot, if they would want to do a good movie, they could have learned from this movie. They could try to do this movie, 13, The Conspiracy. Oh, uh, 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 this is a release after. They called the bullshit. The X-Files was actually in, in uh, the X-Files was actually 1993, like this movie, Demolition Man, but they, but, uh, they were like releasing season 4 and 5 the time, you know, actually was season 5 the time and 6. And they call it run from the X Files, make it more uh, uh, more exciting, make it more uh, uh, more more fantastic, you know, more more intense, more exciting, you know, so that the, the viewers would be more attracted, you know, by mystery. And that's what they failed. They didn't do almost nothing about this film. The, uh, it was boring. It was just forgettable. Yeah, the movie was boring. I watched yesterday and finished it today because it was boring, you know. Brothers in Arms was just terrible, you know. There's, oh, the, it was just really terrible. It's just like time waster. And I know the movie is not for everyone. I know maybe many people never heard about it or saw it, you know. I mean, sure. This has just gone awful. It made the first movie a masterpiece, a classic, which it is. But this movie was just absolutely forgettable. Bad film. Terrible film, you know. Anyway, um, that's my movie review on Universal Soldier 2. Brothers in Arms will review tomorrow the sequel. I don't know when I'm gonna review Universal, Universal Soldier 3 the Regeneration in that movie with Scott Atkins. Um, I forgot, the, I, I keep forgetting the title because the last is so forgettable. Fuck the, fuck Universal Soldier 4 with Scott Atkins. Fuck that piece of shit movie. No, this is just, this is just one of the worst. This is one of the worst movies ever. Even so bad, like like Universal, Universal Soldier 4, Days of Reckoning or Day of Reckoning or whatever. So, fuck those movies, you know. So anyway, uh, see you tomorrow for Universal Soldier 3 Unfinished Business. When I finish it, if I finish it, I'm out for the for the day. So good night and peace.